this is your teacher speaking. As I am away on a business trip, I think I should make this video to give you instruction on the content of week number five, time clauses and random sentences. As a matter of fact, we won't have enough time for makeup classes later on. Therefore, you should try to uh, watch this video and do the practices for yourself. The video is designed for writing one K40 on Wednesday and Thursday as well. To the main contents. Today, I'll try to cover two major pieces of information and write on sentences by looking at dependent and independent clauses. And then, I'll give a little definition of run on sentences. Uh, about the time clauses, a brief revise, a revision of the time signifiers in English and some and the tenses used in time clauses. Finally, you're going to be doing some practice for yourself. Now to the dependent and independent clause. Understanding the difference between the two types of clauses enable us to understand the random sentence better. So let's see. How do we define a dependent and an independent clause? Very simple. The name says it all. The dependent clause is a clause that depends on another one for its existence. It cannot stand alone with meaning, while an independent clause certainly can stand alone with meaning. Let's see some examples, and then we'll try to find out which one is the dependent and which one is the independent clause. Example number one, the sun is high, so put in some sunscreen. Very easy. The sun is high is the independent clause, while so put on some sunscreen is the dependent clause. The next chapter has a lot of difficult information in it. That is the independent clause, and the other one, meaning blah blah blah, is dependent relative clause, right? It, it depends on the first clause for its existence. Number three, Mr. Davidson, blah blah blah, that is the independent clause, and and he has sacrificed his health. It's also an independent clause. So in this case, the two clauses are the same in terms of function and conjoined by n. The fourth example, this computer doesn't make sense to me, that is the independent clause. And because it came without a manual, it's the dependent clause. We see dependent clauses come in various shapes and sizes. They can be relative clauses or that clauses. Uh, now, what else? Time clauses, right? And some of the uh, uh, reason or results, blah, blah, blah. So what uh, is a run-on sentence? A run-on sentence, by its name, run-on, can be seen as a sentence that runs a little too long for uh, its own purpose, right? But that's not really what we'll try to understand here. A run-on sentence is one that carries more than one independent clause at a time. And the clauses are not properly connected by cohesive devices. What does that mean? Now look at this example. The sun is high, comma, put on some sunblock. So we'll see these are currently two independent clauses joined by a comma, which is not correct in terms of English structural rules. So we should try to correct this. Number two, the next chapter has a lot of difficult information. It's an independent clause. Then comma, join with another independent clause, which is you should start studying right away. Number three would be the same, Mr. Davidson, blah, blah, blah. Here is an independent clause. However, he has sacrificed his health, blah, blah, blah. That's also... Uh, an independent clause but join with a comma. Lastly, most of those computers, independent clause, comma, this proves my point, also another independent clause. Now we'll see how we can correct this, uh, these sentences in order to make them correct. For the first one, very simple, we can add a conjunction like so. Or basically, you can replace the comma with a full stop here to separate them into two sentences. For example number two, 
Replacing the comma with a full stop enables us to make this a uh, correct sentence. Number three is the same. Removing the comma and putting in a full stop and then capitalize H in however. And for number four, we can replace this with which, turning it into a relative clause. So we see run-on sentences are those which has basically two or more independent clause at the same time. And make sure if you want those clauses in the same sentence, try to connect them properly using the correct cohesive device, like a coordinating conjunction and but. Okay. Now, one more thing I'd like you to pay attention to is the comma splice. The comma splice is mostly associated with run-on sentences. What is a comma splice? That's the act of using a comma to connect two independent clauses, as we've seen in the previous example in the previous slide. Now, more examples. My family bakes together nearly every night, comma. We then get to enjoy everything we make together. We see the comma here is used to connect two independent clauses in one sentence, and so making it a run-on one, removing the comma will solve the problem. Number two, it's nearly half past five, comma, we cannot reach the town before dark. We can add a conjunction here like so, or just remove the comma and putting in a full stop, comma splice. Right? Now to the time clauses. Time clause is a dependent clause, meaning they cannot stand alone with meaning. And a time clause certainly it signifies time in a sentence. Some time signifiers are as soon as, until, when, while, and blah blah blah. And we remember that the tense in a time clause is normally of simple or perfect form rather than of a continuous form. Let's look at some example. I'll come as soon as I finish this. And when he came around, I was still trying to fix the bike. You see, in the first sentence, it was the uh, present perfect tense. And in the second example, past simple. I think that's enough for all of the theory for today's lesson. Your job is to do some of the practices listed out in this slide. And you can find it at the link below the video. These are online ways, so you do it and get corrections on the website as well. Thank you very much for joining me with this video and hope that you enjoy studying writing one.